Is he hostile? Oh, no, oh, just run. Just run, Greg. Run. Uh, oh, uh, well then. <laughs> Ew. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to jump into a gritty, punishing RPG experience with a story mode mixed with knockout tournaments? <laughs> wielding the power of a protagonist that has just finished drinking the whole tavern under the table. If so, then why? Either way, you're in luck, as today we're diving into the brutal and dangerously hilarious world of Exanima, which along with sporting one of the most elaborate physics-based combat systems and environments, also throws its players into a world that will not hesitate to tear the player to pieces, despite their endless flailing attempts at looking formidable. My name's Mitch Mannix, and this is the side and head-splitting world of Exanima. As always, our journey begins at the character creator, first checking out the game's story mode, with Exanima sporting quite a middling amount of options to customize your chosen hero, as well as when choosing some initial stats to get started. But we need a hero for this journey, so must of course call upon the one and only Greg. That's right, for any OG fans of the channel, we finally see a return of that odd bloke that kept following me around in Kingdom Come Deliverance, for a chance to redeem himself. You hear that, Greg? Don't screw this up. Beginning the game's story mode, we find our hero in what would become a trademark state of his, face down chewing on the floor. Getting up, we spend an embarrassing amount of time figuring out how to pick up the lit torch, and started getting used to the tank controls while exploring the room, which even for me, an elderly man growing up on games such as the original Resident Evil, was quite a challenge. Pulling the door amnesia style, we make our way out of the initial room to begin our whiskey-infused journey, introducing ourselves to some of the locals. Sorry. As well as getting our hands on an early weapon in the form of a hand saw. Delving a little further, we encounter our first fight. Fight being a rather generous term, as at this early stage devolved quickly into Greg stumbling into and introducing himself to all the surrounding furniture. Oh, Greg, your poor head, as it's been destroyed. Is he alive? What's going on? Oh, he's coming back! His head is renewed! Oh, no, oh, Greg. And with round two going the very same way, despite our foe's lack of skill when it comes to intimidating entrances. Surprise, motherfucker! Oh, Down for good this time, Greg quickly got back to it. So fast, in fact, that someone may have forgotten to pick his gear when creating the character, for another attempt at getting used to the game's physics-based combat system. Exanima's combat takes into account a number of factors when facing off against foes. More typical elements such as weapon types and where the target is hit, mixed with more in-depth factors such as which part of the weapon makes contact, the footwork, and positioning when swinging, calculating the speed of the swing and with it the damage output. As seen here, with Greg finally getting his first victory, before stumbling on like a giant baby with a sippy cup filled with Jack Daniels. Moving further into the dungeon, along with searching the game's containers, Greg looked to see if it was possible to break open some of the surrounding boxes with his newly acquired sledgehammer, leading to an argument with the ladder and a series of events that genuinely nearly made me pass out from laughing. Just... can I...? Come on, Greg. I don't think... oh... Come on, just get a good hit, hit in. Come on... oh... oh god... oh no... Greg! <laughs> the ladder's involved! Greg, Greg, come on! So just <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, <for> God's sake. <laughs> One eternity later. Uh, okay, well, that's a no on opening crates. To say it takes a while to get used to Exanima's control scheme would be a colossal understatement. But slowly, Greg was getting into the swing of things along with uncovering some additional gear for the journey ahead. Tutorial information for the game is found in the manual upon hitting the pause screen, that goes over some of the basics including the game's magic, that we'll get a look at along with the game's other modes a little later. Delving further, we find a key in some nice leather gear on a corpse, as well as getting stuck in what I like to call the British over-politeness checkmate, with a cheeky ball bag standing in front of the door with poor Greg trying to open it, but once in, giving him a piece of his mind while taking a piece of his. As with any hard-as-nails RPG, even the enemies right at the start can easily demolish the player, but they are not the only thing to watch out for in Xanima's world, as the game does feature some spicy traps and puzzles for the player to tackle, as in here with Greg getting a swift reminder that even despite running as light as possible, he still has ultimately quite underwhelming cardio. With each death, the player will be able to get up, providing they still have some yellow health left. 
But once you're down for good, it's back to one of the game's very few checkpoints. And once progressed further enough in the game, the system gets even more punishing. Greg 2.0 did not get off to the strongest start, with Greg choosing to fuse his balls to a wall with a solitary foot flailing around, in what I assume is surrender. But after mustering up some courage, stumbled upon an interesting discovery in the form of a friendly NPC that after some convincing joins us on our adventure, with Greg 2.0 getting a wingman out of what looks to be Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. This companion, as well as being a welcome addition to combat the game's difficulty, will discuss various discoveries with the player, and can also be geared to make them even more formidable, while slowly grinding through the deadly halls of the game. Come along, Shaggy dear! A game that for me was so punishing that after reaching the catacombs we only had a slither of life and no healing at all, so we're greeted with instantly getting owned upon entering. A situation that with any luck, Greg 3.0 would fix. Xanima has various roguelike elements that encourage multiple playthroughs, both with its story mode and as we'll see a little later in its tournament arena mode, with global experience being earned to then use on new characters when playing through the game's story. Starting once more with Greg 3.0, making sure this time to explore to the fullest and grab some of the game's extremely rare healing selves, and learning to pick and choose early fights, sometimes opting to instead sneak by as inconspicuously as possible. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm just here. Oh, oh god, take me to Whiterun! Oh, sorry. I seem to have had too much sherry. That's right. Keep it cool, Greg. Oh, for god's sake. Now in a much better position, and with a semi-geared Shaggy in tow, we make it and get a chance to explore the catacombs, with this time the NPCs being the ones to embarrass themselves. Feel my wrath! Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh, just uh, wait, oh, just, uh, 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 just, just, uh, 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 just fuck this, feel the my, ah, uh, wait the, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, the irony, ah, uh, uh, wait a moment, uh, uh, Making our way through the catacombs, it's in the next zone that this run slowed to a crawl, when faced with navigating through the game's very similar looking rooms and corridors. Picking up a compass will grant us access to it via the UI, and it did help, but I have to admit it did begin to get frustrating as time went on. The game does feature a map for each level that can be found, but with no markers doesn't exactly give you a direction about where to go next, still leading me to not really knowing what I was looking for and which set of stairs would lead me where, as the game does not even inform the player of where they have arrived when entering a new zone. Regardless, we pressed on, getting a little better at a time with the combat, while still experiencing confrontations with inanimate objects, such as here with Greg getting utterly outfoxed by a bed frame. But with our endeavours paying off, finding an epic looking portal taking us to level 4, and with it out of the apparently beginner friendly zones of the dungeons, with Shaggy apprehensive about the prospect of progressing through the portal, an apprehension that could not have been better placed as through the portal and into the late levels, Xanima does a stellar job at proving just why the first three levels are considered tutorial zones, with various new looking locations such as the crossroads and the archives, featuring not only enemies so strong they instantly turn this RPG into a horror experience, Oh, God. But even a boss roaming the archives that provides a challenge for expert players and a total nightmare for the other 99.9% .9 of players. Even when specking into and unleashing some of the game's recently added magic, the difficulty does not subside, with the real game beginning once progressing past level 3, as here the player will meet relentless enemies that coupled with the game's unique combat system will truly test those that step into it. Made even more tense and hardcore by the game now setting the player back to the entrance to level 4 every time they're defeated, making every encounter feel heavy with danger with so much on the line, as well as letting us get old Shaggy back from the grave, as we found out that he is not resurrectable with healing items, no matter how many you plant on his face. Now I know what you may be thinking, this is all well and good, but what about the knockout tournament element? Well, Xanima also features an arena mode, where players will be asked to create a character to act as their manager before being thrown into their base of operations, which allows for recruiting a whole team of combatants to take on the available game modes, including tournaments to unlock some tasty gear as the player progresses. Vendors, trainers, and other specialists can be acquired to further boost your team, whilst making sure to manage outgoings to keep the funds coming in while taking on the game's frequently brutal face-offs. Each set of challenges and available minigames are split into six tiers of difficulty, with a wide range of modes available, 
including solo and team-based duels, brawls using just fists, and even putting together a small team to take on an ogre. The arena mode adds even more roguelike features, with hired NPCs and creator-controlled fighters slowly increasing in power, as well as with victories earning income to spend on gear to upgrade each fighter for each tier of difficulty. The arena mode includes tournaments for your team to reach for, which reward some of the highest tier gear, as well as seasonal winners to crown the top teams overall. This mode is highly addictive, as well as being a great place for players to get a handle on the game's unique combat mechanics, and may go some way to avoid first encounters in line with poor old Greg. The arena mode is steeped with replayability, and honestly I think should be experienced first before diving into the game's story mode, as was nice to get some more quickfire practice in with the game as opposed to having to restart after every defeat. Overall, Exanima on the surface looks like a bit of a meme game, with player characters, well, mine at least, flailing around and falling over literally everything in the environment. But after spending some significant time with the game, its place in my head of being just a joke and a bit of a laugh could not be further from the truth. The game's small, seven-member strong development team, Bare Metal Entertainment, are crafting something incredibly deep and unique in this single-player RPG title. The game's combat has so many moving parts to it that I imagine would take a massive amount of time to master, and even then still providing nuance to keep each encounter engaging. The game's magic is in its early stage, recently added in the game's 0.9 update, so currently feels more like something fun to try out than a core component, and felt quite clunky to use. The gear in the game is procedurally generated, so it gives way to finding a staggering amount of variety when progressing through the story or arena modes. But the real star of the show for me is the feeling of slowly crawling through the game's incredibly dangerous feeling environments, completely stripped of all the perks and confidence that comes with being a force to be reckoned with when playing. The physics-based system did lead to odd bounce of frustration with it feeling so unwieldy and unintuitive, and I think this will split players down the middle once the hilarity of the first few hours flailing around just to land a blow starts to become less amusing. Safe to say, if you're not willing to at least spend a few hours getting used to and practicing this combat system, attempting further progression would most likely be quite infuriating. But the more I played the game, the more I uncovered, and I will be keeping an eye on the game as it nears its 1.0 release. Although I'm not sure how long that may be, as the game does seem to have quite large gaps between updates, which likely due to the very small development team. And after doing some research, it seems like the devs are focused on making this a passion project to create something truly unique, over simply just a cash cow, which is very respectable. A truly inspiring title, and one that may be worth a look for those looking for a serious challenge. As opposed to Greg, who unfortunately remains constantly falling at the first hurdle. Or well, the first ladder. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played Xanima or any other new or interesting upcoming RPGs? Either way, I'm keen to get your thoughts down in the comments. Please drop the video a like if you enjoyed it to sate the algorithm guards. And if you're into RPGs, MMOs, or hey, even just funny videos, you're in the right place. So don't forget to subscribe for oh so much more. I want to give a huge shout out to the channel supporters who help in keeping the content coming. Oh, good lord, they're so beautiful. If you're interested in signing up as a channel patron for all sorts of perks, including behind the scenes, bloopers, and exclusive videos, as well as having your name featured at the end of every video, the link to the channel Patreon page is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you in a banana hammock. Aha, you thought I was going to say in the next one. Well, I, I am now in, in the next one. Oh god, what have I done? Shit. Oh, Jesus, calm down. Oh dear lord, what have I done? Standing upon his steed like a segne, the former being mostly due to his reputation of being slightly less inaccurate with his spells for unknown reasons. <laughs>